Hi, I'm Judy Buss, the children's minister here at Foothills. The summer is nearly gone, and while that's sad, it means fall is almost here. There are so many things I'm looking forward to this fall. Sweaters, boots, chai tea, fall leaves, apple cider donuts, all the fun things. But what I'm looking forward to most is more opportunities to see our friends like you. We go to two services on September 12th with classes for kids, birth through fifth grade. We will be out in the breezeway welcoming you with some special treats and maps that will help you find the right classroom. Our small group leaders will be ready for you. A new school year means a new theme, new activities, and new and old friends. And if that's not exciting enough, the very next week we will have a ginormous family service. We call it the Fall Family Kickoff. Fun games and worship, prizes, and even a scavenger hunt for the whole family. The fun evening starts at 4 p.m. You won't want to miss. Now for our weekly Sunday experiences. Remember, there are three videos and you can skip ahead if you'd like. They're all listed right here. First look for our preschoolers, 252 basic for our kindergarten through second grade, and preteen for our third through fifth graders. Even if you can join us in person on Sundays, you can go through these videos and watch John and Brandon on the So and So Show. Oh, don't forget the parent guides are attached to help your family have some awesome conversations. Now for the first look video. There is nothing, nothing impossible. No, there is nothing, nothing too difficult. Because you're with me, you're with me. I am not afraid. Nothing is too hard for you.
friends, I'm Poppy. I'm going to my grandma's house for a sleepover. Let's see. I have my pajamas. Oh, and I'll need to clean my teeth. So, I need to bring my toothbrush. I can't wait to do all this fun stuff. All my cousins are gonna be there. There's my cousin Ellie, she loves to dance. My cousin Willow will be there too. She finds the best bedtime stories for us to read. And I can't forget my cousin Shay. She thinks of the best treats for us to make. I can't wait to do all this fun stuff. And then I'll get to sleep all cozy in my sleeping bag on Grandma's floor. Except I've never slept anywhere but my own bed. That's why I'm taking Mr. Bear. If I'm afraid, I can cuddle him super tight and he can help me be brave. Hoo, hoo. It's Ollie. Hello, Poppy. Hoo, hoo. Going on a sleepover at Grandma's, are you? Hey, Ollie. Yes, I am. I'm super excited, but I'm also afraid. Sometimes being brave is hard. It's true. But I know someone who can help you. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through who? Oz got a Bible story for me and you. <gasps> well, hello, friends. I'm Aisha. Welcome to my cupcake food truck. I'm so happy to see you today. Do you want to see my latest creation? Cute. Each one has a little baby cradle on it because today's story starts with a baby. Are you ready to hear it? If you're ready for the story, on the count of three, yell, tell me a story. One, two, three. Tell me a story. Okay, so today's true story from the Bible begins, like I said, with the baby and his mom. <laughs> Look at how sweet he is. His name is baby Moses. You can tell his mom loves him so much. <laughs> but there was a mean king and he wanted to get rid of all the baby boys in God's family. Everyone say, oh no, <gasps> oh no. Moses' mom wanted to protect her baby. She knew that God was always with her and would always be with baby Moses. That helped her be brave. So, she and her daughter, Miriam, went down to the river and hid Moses in a basket in the tall grass. Then, Miriam hid and watched to see what would happen. Let's help Moses' sister watch. Tell me if you see anything. Do you see something? Oh, oh it's a bunny! <laughs> Hi, bunny. <laughs> okay, keep watching. Do you see something? <gasps> what is it? <laughs> it's a jumping fish. How fun. Keep watching. I think I hear someone. <gasps> it's the princess. Do you think she's going to help baby Moses? <gasps> Look, she's holding baby Moses. She's going to bring him home and keep him safe. But wait. She needs someone to help her take care of the baby. Moses' sister, Miriam, came out from behind the tall grass and told the princess, I know who can help with the baby. It was Moses' mom. Moses' mom can help. This is so great. Baby Moses is safe and he still gets to be with his mom. Hooray! <laughs> Thank you, God. You were with her the whole time. Do you know what? No matter where you go or what you do, God is always with you too. God is always with us. Did you like this story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> hey there, Ollie, tell me, who is always with you? God is always with me. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, 
Who is always with you? God is always with me. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. God was with Moses and his mom, and God is always with you and me, too. Thanks, Sally. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Wow, God was with Moses' mom and helped her be brave. And God is always with us, too. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say, got it. Get it? Got it! Good! I'm still taking Mr. Bear with me, but I don't need him to be brave because God is with me. I'm ready to go. See you all next time. Bye! The Lord our God to help us. 2 Chronicles 32 8. We have the Lord our God to help us. 2 Chronicles 32 8. your eyes. Ah, better. But that's not actually what I mean. I'm talking about what you pay attention to as you go through your day. Do you see that candy wrapper on the sidewalk? The dishwasher that needs to be unloaded? What about the toy lying in the middle of the floor that someone is definitely gonna trip over? Do your eyes pay attention to the kid playing alone on the playground? or your older neighbor trying to wield her trash bin up the driveway. All around you, there are things that need to be done, just waiting for someone to step up. And that someone can be you. When you see that piece of trash, toss it in the can. Take that silverware and slide it in the drawer. Pick up that toy and put it away. Invite that kid to join your kickball team and offer to help your neighbor get her rolling bin back to the house. When you see a need and you make a move to take care of it, that's initiative. It's a great way to show love to the people around you. When you see what needs to be done and do it, others can see God at work in you. That's why initiative is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Me got to see what you see. You are doing a great work in me. I've decided I can stand still. No, you have given me purpose. All my, all my heart is yours. All my, all my life. Yours. All my, all my life is yours 
up the call to serve you. Serve you. You have given me a job to do. I wanna love the world just like you. Yeah. You have given me purpose. All my, all my heart is yours. Jacob. Oh, there it is. That's how I, nope, that's not it, Jacob. Okay, okay. Nope, it's back on again. Okay. <laughs> and I am ready for lunch. I mean, not really. I don't actually have a rocket or anything, but I am ready for initiative. Initiative is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. Astronauts are really great at showing initiative. When they see what needs to be done, they don't just ignore it. They do something about it. They even have this thing they do before every launch. It's called a status check. And it works like this. Rocket fuel, check. Oh. Rocket fuel is a go. Red switchy thing, check. Red switchy thing. Uh, red switchy thing is a go. Power thrusters, check. Power thrusters. Power thrusters are a gross. I can't check, I can't check the power thrusters because somebody left a dirty sock here. Well, can you move the dirty sock? I mean, I could, yes, but it's not mine. I didn't leave it here. And so I don't think it's my job to move the sock. I suggest that we halt the launch until whoever left the sock here comes and gets it themselves. Copy that. Holding launch for a dirty sock. Good. Roger that. I wonder how long I'm gonna have to wait for someone to come get this sock. Probably gonna be here for a while. You know what? Today's story is about a guy who saw something that needed to be done, and he did something about it, even though it wasn't his responsibility. Sounds like a great guy. Will somebody come get this sock? It smells. Some people, am I right? Ugh. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapters 1 and 2. Over and over, the Israelites promised to be faithful to God. But over and over again, they turned away from Him. At last, God allowed enemy armies to take His people captive and carry them off to Babylon, nearly a thousand miles away. After 70 years, God allowed some of his people to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. But back in Babylon, now part of Persia, the rest of the Jews had made lives for themselves. In fact, a Jew named Nehemiah had become quite important. Greetings. I am cupbearer to the king. A cupbearer was like a bodyguard 
who checked to make sure that no one poisoned the king's food or drink. Nehemiah was likely a trusted advisor. Your Majesty, may I suggest the date pudding? But though it was nearly 150 years since the Israelites had left Jerusalem, Nehemiah's heart was still in his homeland. When his brother Hanani returned from his trip to Judah, Nehemiah had a chance for some news. Brother, how are the people left in Jerusalem? Some are still alive, but they're having a hard time. Oh no. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. The gates have been burned with fire. People are ashamed. That's terrible. A city without walls could never prosper. The people would always live in fear of being attacked. I'm sorry to bring such bad news. No, no, I'm, I'm glad you told me. Dismayed, Nehemiah sat down and wept. He couldn't even eat for several days. Instead, he poured his heart out to God. Lord, you are a great and wonderful God. See how your people are suffering. Please listen to me. I'm praying for the people of Israel. We Israelites have committed sins against you. We haven't obeyed the commands you gave to Moses. Nehemiah reminded God of the promise he made to his people. You said, if you people are not faithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me, I will bring you back. Lord, please pay careful attention to my prayer. Give me success when I bring my request to King Artaxerxes. For four whole months, Nehemiah prayed daily to God. He knew before taking action, he needed to listen and prepare. At last, he was ready. Your Majesty. Anyone who came before the king was supposed to appear happy. But for the first time, Nehemiah allowed his true feelings to show. Oh, why are you looking so sad? May you live forever? Why shouldn't I look sad? The city of my people has been destroyed, and fire has burned up its gates. The king could have been annoyed and ordered Nehemiah to be punished, but God moved his heart. Well, what do you want? Nehemiah prayed silently for the right words. Send me to Judah. Let me go to the city of Jerusalem. I want to rebuild it. The king frowned and glanced over at the queen. At last, he said, hmm. How long will your journey take? When will you get back? Precisely as many moons as are required. Fair enough. Dismissed. Nehemiah turned to leave but he knew there was more he needed for the job. If it pleases you, may I take some letters with me? I want to give them to the governors west of the Euphrates River, and they'll help me to travel safely. Mm, done. Oh, and a letter to the caretaker of the royal park, so he'll give me logs for the wall and gates and a house? <laughs> what next? A whole escort of army officers and horsemen? That would be fantastic. Fine. All of it. Get on with it. God had given Nehemiah such favor with the king that he had everything he needed for his long journey to Judah. At last, Nehemiah had reached the city he dreamt of his entire life. Jerusalem. Though Nehemiah was overjoyed by the first glimpse of the city, it must have been difficult to see its crumbling, broken down walls. So much work to be done. But Nehemiah didn't tell anyone his plan at first. On a bright moonlit night, Nehemiah snuck out with only a few others to see the full damage to the walls. We have to know what we're up against. Nehemiah traveled by donkey. With a few trusted friends, they left the city through the broken valley gate. Let's head toward the Jackal Well. At last, Nehemiah got a clear picture of the devastation. Jagged piles of rock lay everywhere. The gates were gone with scorched gaping holes in their place. It's such a big job. Only God can do this. Nehemiah circled what was left of the wall, heading up the Kidron Valley and at last returning through the valley gate. The next morning, he called together the priests and nobles and officials. You know, I've come to visit my people in Jerusalem, but that's not the only reason I'm here. Nehemiah gestured to the jagged remains of the wall, visible from where they stood. You can see the trouble we're in. Jerusalem has been destroyed. Fire has burned up its gates. Tell us something new. Come on, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Then people won't be ashamed anymore. 
Hmm, well, I mean, I mean, that's something to consider if you think about it. Um... Our grandparents tried that years ago. But God has been helping me. He gave me favor with the king. He'll help us complete the work. So who's in? Well, me. I'm in. Me too. Let's start rebuilding. God moved the hearts of the people to help Nehemiah. And together they began the gigantic job of repairing the walls and gates of Jerusalem. You ever see a piece of trash on the ground and just walk by without picking it up because you didn't put it there? Or maybe someone didn't clean up after themselves when dinner was over. Do you just leave the messy dishes lying around? Do you ignore someone else's dirty sock? A lot of people see what needs to be done, but then don't do it because it's not their job. It's not their responsibility. But showing initiative means getting things done, not waiting for someone else to do it. That's what Nehemiah did when he started rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem. It's what Jesus did too. When he saw a need, he did something about it. He healed people who needed healing. He taught people who needed to learn. And Jesus took care of our greatest need when he died on the cross for our sins. So, if you want to show initiative, don't just see what needs to be done. Do something about it. Do a status check. Do you see any dirty dishes? Dirty dishes. Oh! Dirty dishes. Cleared away. Check. Do you see any trash? Water bottle. Recycled. Check. Do you see a dirty sock? Dirty socks cleared away. Even though it's not my job. Check. Here's the one thing to remember today. Don't wait for someone else to do what needs to be done. Initiative takes a lot of work for sure, but it's worth it. It helps you, it helps other people, and it helps the world. And maybe, just maybe, it can help the universe. I'll see you next time. your eyes. Ah, better. But that's not actually what I mean. I'm talking about what you pay attention to as you go through your day. Do you see that candy wrapper on the sidewalk? The dishwasher that needs to be unloaded? What about the toy lying in the middle of the floor that someone is definitely going to trip over? Do your eyes pay attention to the kid playing alone on the playground? or your older neighbor trying to wield her trash bin up the driveway. All around you, there are things that need to be done, just waiting for someone to step up, and that someone can be you. When you see that piece of trash, toss it in the can. Take that silverware and slide it in the drawer. Pick up that toy and put it away. Invite that kid to join your kickball team and offer to help your neighbor get her rolling bin back to the house. When you see a need and you make a move to take care of it, that's initiative. It's a great way to show love to the people around you. When you see what needs to be done and do it, others can see God at work in you. That's why initiative is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Got to see what you see. You 
You are doing a great work in me I've decided I can't stand still No, you have given me purpose Oh, my, all my heart is yours Oh, my, all my life is yours I will, I will make a move for you Launching foot missiles. Oh, cool. Let me see. Watch this. All right. Oh! oh. <laughs> no, it barely launched. Hey, can I try? Yes, you can yeah. actually. Here, let me sure. set this up for you. Thanks. All right. Okay. <laughs> right. We're clear to launch. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And welcome to the So and So Show. John, John, we we have an amazing show today. That we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. But you, you should probably get rid of this big bag of trash before we get the show started. Yeah, well, I didn't put it there. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's kind of it's kind of blocking the shot. So. Yeah, not my job. Why don't you throw it away? I didn't put it there either. Yeah, but it's closer to your side. Okay, no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, look, this is your basement. Yeah, but there's a trash can right beside you. So what? We're just gonna we're gonna do the show with this this giant bag of trash on the desk? I Is don't know, Brandon. Are we? So I am so excited about today's show. We have a huge guest, so big, someone that, quite frankly, I can't even believe she agreed to come on the show. But she <laughs> is here. Today. In this very room. <laughs> Should we tell them who it is? I don't think an introduction is necessary. I agree. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Oh, wow. Come on in and have a seat. Yeah, come on in. Have a seat. Have a seat. <laughs> wow. We are so this happy is, to have you here. here on the show today. I am so happy to be here. <laughs> Look, I'm sure our viewers know who you are, uh, but just in case... 
Tell us who you are and what you know. People call me Miss Magnificent, the one woman circus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Tell us about some of your amazing acts. Well, why don't I just show you? Oh, oh that would be awesome. I'll just put this right here. Oh, wow. here now, before we do anything, it's very important to stretch. <sighs> wow. Amazing. <laughs> How are you doing that? <sighs> I've never seen anyone do anything like that before. What? 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 It's like your head is spinning all the way around. What are you, an owl? <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's better. Okay, now for my very first act, I'm going to bring out oh, oh, man. my very, very good friend, <laughs> Frank. Whoa, is that a tarantula? <laughs> Oh, oh, wait, wait, come, come, he's crawling up your arm. I, 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 oh. oh, it's crawling on her neck. Oh, no, it's on your face. Oh, no. It's on her face. <laughs> you have a tarantula on your face. <laughs> okay, back in there, little <laughs> buddy. Okay, <laughs> now that Frank is back home safe and sound, I think it's time that we have some fun with swords. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, I think I'm going to need a little more room. How about over there? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Come on. Right over here. Yeah, right over here, sure. Great spot. That was so awesome. Absolutely. Mm. Okay, so okay. we're just going to get this ready. I'm going to put this up here. What is here. this? What is this? What, yeah, yeah. What, what, Watch. what are you? Watch and see. Here we go. What? Are, no. Oh, no. Oh. What? Did she, she's swallowing a sword. That's gonna hurt. Oh. Oh, I can't believe what I'm seeing. What? 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 And oh. we're through with that one. <laughs> All right, now, John, take this lighter and light this for me. Oh. All right. Whoa. Okay. No! Yes! Doom! Oh, that's incredible! Amazing! Oh, breathtaking! So big! <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for having me on your little show. No, 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 no. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Our audience has never seen anything like that. Well, it was my pleasure. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, let me get your hat. Oh, let yes, me get your my hat, hat and not my bag. Sure, sure, there's your hat. And let me get your bag here. Oh, that's perfect. That's thank perfect. You. Thank, thank you. Thank so you. Much. Oh, that was so great. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Oh, it was magnificent. Oh, oh I like it. I like your <laughs> style. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How do we top that? It's Bible story time with Kellen. How's it going, Kellen? Great. Um, why is there a giant bag of trash on the desk? Uh, we don't know. Yeah, no idea how it got here. Hey, but more importantly, did you know who we just had on the show? Yeah, I was watching. I think it was Miss Magnificent. Wasn't she incredible? I don't know. Actually, no one can see her because there was a giant bag of trash blocking her. No, no, they were able to see her. I mean, uh, yeah, surely they were, they were, uh, I mean, Steve, you were, you were able to see her, right? A, a cookie? Yeah, but Jason, you were able to. This is all your fault. My if you hadn't thrown away, I you needed to throw, you, you told me what? At the beginning of the show, told me I what? said there was trash on the this desk. This is not I my trash, was, Brandon. Hey, this is, guys. It was your desk. Hey, hey guys. What? what? I think I got a story that can help us out. Oh, then by all means, take it away, Kellen. Gladly. Our story today is from the book of Nehemiah. In fact, we're gonna be talking about Nehemiah all month long. So here to help me tell the beginning of his story are the so-and-so show players. <laughs> Nehemiah was the king's wine taster. Oh, King Artaxerxes, this is good. I can smell hints of fig. Oh, and that was cherry. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Burnt camel hair. Oh, that was 
wonderful. Yeah. But you're smelling that. Can you taste it and check for poison? <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, that's my job. Wine All right. Not wine <clears throat> All right. Oh yeah, King. Excellent. That's just <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Once again. Once I'm just again. kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh man, you should have seen your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fine. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, just <laughs> bottoms up. Yeah. Nehemiah had been away from his home in Jerusalem for quite some time. So when his brother Hanani came to visit, Nehemiah asked him all about Jerusalem. Nehemiah! Hanani! Hey! Oh, it's good to see you. Tell me, tell me. I, I want to hear about everything. Tell me how the people are back home in Judah. How's the city of Jerusalem? Yeah, oh, brother. Brother, brother, brother. The people are having a hard time. Uh, and Jerusalem. Oh, sweet Jerusalem. The walls of oh, Jerusalem. I love the they, walls. Of, they're huge. Yeah, they were. <laughs> huge, huh? Were, were. The walls of, oh, come down. Yeah, the gates are burned with fire. Yep, 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 I got you. Yep. When Nehemiah heard this, he wept for several days, and he didn't eat any food. <laughs> uh, you're out of strawberry. <laughs> I think you get the point. Nehemiah was sad, and he did something that's helpful to do when you're feeling sad. He prayed to God. Nehemiah praised God in his prayers. And he also admitted that he and his people, well, they kind of messed up, and they hadn't been following God. Also, in his prayers, Nehemiah asked God to give him success when he asks King Artaxerxes a really big favor. Ah, Nehemiah, mm. would you? That's good. Oh, what? Nehemiah, mm. what? you're sad. Why are you so sad? <sighs> King, I may live forever, yep. but my city where my people of old have been buried. It's been destroyed. The city's destroyed and, and the walls and gates have been burned <laughs> well, with what fire. You, terrible. What do you want? Nehemiah again prayed to God before he made his request of the king. If it please you, I would ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of Jerusalem, so that I can rebuild the wall. How long will it take? The king gave Nehemiah permission. And Nehemiah also asked the king to send along letters that would not only make sure he had a safe journey, but it would also help Nehemiah get access to logs he could use to rebuild part of the city wall. Artaxerxes gave him the letters and sent an army of officers with him for protection. After Nehemiah had been in Jerusalem for three days, he went out at night to check on the wall. He went through the valley gate toward the jackal well. Hey, whoa. The jackal well? That's what it says. All right. Let's go. And then he walked to the dung gate. Dung gate? Dung gate. It's right there in the Bible. You know what? This is wild. This is it's wild. Nehemiah saw that the entire wall had been destroyed. So he went back to speak with the priest and the officials of Jerusalem. Good. Are all the priests and the officials here? Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Right here. Right here. All right, good. Good. Who did you good. say this guy was? Mm. I don't know. Let's listen. Hello. Mm. Mm. Sorry. Um. Hello, friends. We all know what kind of trouble that we are in right now. Jerusalem has been destroyed and our gates have been burned with fire. I know, it's, it's terrible. It is terrible. But there's, yes, it is. Uh, but listen, listen, please stop. Please stop. Thank you. 
<clears throat> we must try to, nay, nay, nay. We will rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. We will rebuild the wall. Yes, we can do that. My friends, listen, God has been gracious to me. God has helped me and King Artaxerxes has given us supplies, supplies that will help us rebuild the wall right now. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so who is ready to get to work and rebuild the wall? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Let's go. Let's go. To be continued. Thank you so much, so and so show players. Take a bow. Wow, great story, Kellen. Right? Back then, city walls protected people from enemies and wild animals. They were very important. So, Nehemiah was heartbroken to find out that the walls of Jerusalem were broken down. Hear me out. Now, it wasn't Nehemiah's fault that the walls were broken down. It wasn't his job to fix them. But after he talked with God, Nehemiah knew he had to do something. And he just did it. Yep. With God's help, Nehemiah got to work. He didn't wait for someone else to do what needed to be done. Huh. Yeah. You guys got it from here? Yeah, I think we do. Yeah. Thanks, Kellen. Later, guys. See you next time. You know? Yeah. But first, reveal the question. What around you needs to be done? Great question. Sure is. Maybe you have a school project you've been putting off. Uh, or maybe you notice some dishes that need to be done. And even though they aren't yours, you wash them. Or maybe there's a giant bag of trash on your studio desk. And it's been there the whole show. It's not your trash. And it's not either of yours, but you realize it's there. And what needs to be done is you just need to throw, throw the, the trash, trash away. away. I see something else that needs to be done. Yeah. Trash can basketball? Absolutely. <laughs> hey, talk about it together. What around you needs to be done? And we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. You ready? Yeah, let's do this. All right. <laughs> Hit it. All right, go. Oh, off the backboard. Oh, man. Maybe, 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 maybe you can do an assist instead. OK, here we go. Alley -oop. Oh! Yeah. That's how you do it, chicken. I can't make a basket. I can't either. And I'm standing right next to it. Oh, all the confetti. Yes! Nice! I made one! You made a trash can! Hey, come on, let's keep going! No, wait, not... What? No, come no, on! No, no, no! Yeah! No, 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 no. Hello. Oh, that's good. All right, I think we're good. Yeah, this looks about normal. <laughs>